Coucou les amis, it's Camden. Welcome back to my channel. I have a new friend here. This is Jean Jean. She's our new little kitty. Say hello, Jean Jean. It means ginger in French. And welcome back to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. And if you're new here, my name is Camden. I'm an American and I live in the south of France. I've moved quite around um, France, but I'm here teaching English in a university. I've worked as a teaching assistant. I've studied abroad. So if you want to know all about that kind of thing and see my daily life and my adventures in France, be sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video. All right, Jean Jean, what are we talking about today? Well, since it's been about a month since we've been back in school, I also made a La Rentrée back to school video all about what my university is doing um, during the pandemic as well as how teaching the second time around has been. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about the differences between French and American schools today because, well, I am a teacher and I've also taught um, not only in university, this is my second year as a lectrice d'anglais. I have other videos about that if you're interested in what teaching at a university is like in France, but I've also been a teaching assistant here in France and in the United States. I studied to become a teacher, so I did student teaching there. So I have a little bit of experience as um, a student in the US, but also as a teacher here in the US um, and in France. So let's get into the video, shall we? All right, so let's talk about the different names for school. So in France, we have maternelle, primaire, collège, and lycée. So maternelle is kind of like preschool. Um, primaire is primary school, like elementary school. Collège is like middle school, and lycée is like high school. And I personally didn't work in any um, uh, maternelle or primaire. I worked as an assistant in collège and lycée, which I really enjoyed. So the students were a little bit older. The youngest students I taught were about 11 years old. And collège uh, is, let's see, it, ha it starts um, at sixième, and I think sixième is the same as sixth grade. So uh, around 11 years old, and then up to, let's see, is it troisième? Say lycée is different because it's only three years. So you have terminal, which is like seniors. You have uh, premier, which is like uh, juniors. And then you have second, which are like sophomores. Um, but uh, troisième is actually in collège. So that would be the equivalent of like freshman year here. So around 14 years old. So another big difference between French and American schools is the school schedule. So I feel, I feel like a lot of the time um, in the US, and it varies uh, depending on school districts, state to state, what the exact times are, but I think school in the US starts a little bit earlier um, and ends earlier as well. So um, when I was in high school, we, start, we started around um, 7.30. Um, when I student taught, um, my classes began around 8.00 and then the school day ended around 2.30 or 3 p.m. And of course, teachers would stay a little bit later usually if they were sponsoring a club, um, leading kind of meetings, or just to get some extra lesson planning done. Whereas here in France, um, I'm not sure if any classes start at eight. I can't remember, it's been a while since I've been an assistant, but classes might start around eight or nine, and then some classes end around five um, for, um, Lycée, at least so for the, the high school level, and they end a lot later. So the, the day is a lot later, but in France, one thing, uh, lunch breaks that they have in France are longer and the students usually are allowed to go home during the lunch break. So um, sometimes they might walk home for lunch. Otherwise they can stay here and eat at the canteen, but rarely students um, are allowed to bring their lunch to school. Whereas in the US, um, you have to stay at school to eat lunch um, and you can either bring your lunch or you can buy lunch in the school cafeteria. So for the type of, um, for the type of lunch we have in the US, it's pretty 
simple, standard. I wouldn't say um, it's always the healthiest. I know um, when Michelle Obama was first lady, I think she was trying to get a program and to improve school lunches. No, Jean Jean, she's exploring the camera right now. All right, there we go. So as I was saying, school lunches in the US aren't always the healthiest, um, but there have been measures to try to improve them. Um, usually it might be, I'm trying to remember what I used to have in school. Sometimes there are pizza days, sometimes you could have a burger or like a little chicken sandwich um, with a side of vegetables like green beans or corn. Uh, you could get like an orange or an apple on the side for fruit. Um, here I'll let you go. I'll let her explore. You could um, get milk um, or chocolate milk if you want. Um, French fries, not always, um, but yeah, it doesn't seem always the healthiest, sometimes packaged snacks for desserts. It could have um, changed recently, but that's how it was when I was in school. Whereas here in France, um, they have a canteen, um, so that's their cafeteria, and the lunches are a lot more healthy, but also a lot bigger, I would say. In France, they tend to eat a smaller, lighter breakfast, whereas in the US, we, a lot of the time, I feel like, Easy girl. We consider uh, breakfast to be the most important meal of the day. So we like to eat a bigger breakfast and then usually maybe like a lighter lunch. And lunch in the US is a lot quicker. I remember we only had like 30 minutes to eat, I think. So our, we had 30 minutes to eat and then we had like a study block um, where we um, work on homework or study during that time period. Um, and then um, what else would we do? And don't worry about her. Her wagging her tail, she wags it a lot, but she, she's not angry. She, sometimes she purrs and wags her tail at the same time. Yeah, that's you. Um, anyway, so I was saying for French lunches, they're a lot bigger. Um, lunch is a nice time for France. They have usually an entree, which is like a little type of salad thing, like a small little, yeah, so in French, entree is like an appetizer of the first course, whereas in English we say entree, that means the, the main course. But in French you have your entree, um, it could be like a small little salad or some kind of vegetable. Um, you have your main course, so usually it's meat. Um, in France uh, there's still a lot of meat. There's not always vegetarian vegan options um, at schools, not always in the US either, but I think some um, schools in France sometimes they might have a vegetarian option like I remember uh, because I'm vegetarian so I, when I would go um, and eat lunch at the school canteen when I didn't bring my lunch which the other teachers thought was weird because usually no one really brings their lunch you just eat at the canteen um, but um, I would just get extra portions of vegetables so sometimes that would be beans or some sort of gratza um, so they have a, a main kind of protein some sort of maybe vegetable on the side usually have bread as well, um, also cheese or yogurt uh, because dairy is very important to the French and then maybe some kind of dessert so maybe you could add another fruit or maybe some kind of pastry or a chocolate thing and then one thing that um, what I did when I was with when I ate lunch with the professors I worked with in France is after our meal we would always have a little coffee a little espresso and then um, share some chocolate when I was teaching in the U.S., um, sometimes I worked during my lunch break. I usually sit in the room. Sometimes um, I would go with my host teacher and we would sit out um, in the, the teacher's, the teacher's um, room with um, other teachers and eat lunch there, but not always. Sometimes we had extra work to do, and we ate our lunch pretty quickly. So one really common thing about schools in the U.S. is that teachers have their own classroom. So a space that they stay the whole school day where they have all their materials, they can decorate the classroom how they want. Whereas in France, um, my experience was that the teachers didn't have their own room necessarily. Sometimes they might have um, shared specific rooms and they had some decorations for like English or geography or whatever the class was but most of the time teachers have to change rooms with the students. Another interesting thing that um, I experienced was in France was when I um, commuted to one of my schools so I actually lived on campus in one of my schools it, um, 
they had a, a, a boarding school there. It was a, it's a public school, but um, sometimes they have something called an internat where um, students that might live in the surrounding villages, they might live at school during the week and then go home during the weekends. Uh, whereas in the U.S., it's usually just private schools that are boarding schools. Um, most of the time, there are schools really close by in your neighborhood, and that's the school you go to. Uh, but I lived um, in the internat, internat, sorry, uh, but not not in the same section as the students. There was a separate little building for the language assistants and other professors who um, came from far away and wanted to stay a night or two. But. Um, I did have another school that I went to that was in a, another little village nearby, so I had to take a bus to get there. And I saw some of my students taking that same bus, the same um, public bus, the same public transportation, whereas in the U.S. we have specific school buses, you know those yellow buses, it's just for students that go um, from neighborhoods to the school directly. All right, so this is a big one, grading or marking, as um, some people like to say here in France because they, they use a lot of British English in, in English school. So I've come to use a term marking sometimes, but we call it grading in the U.S. So when it comes to grades in the U.S., usually um, it's out of 100 points. So an A is maybe like 90. It Honestly, I think it depends on the school, but I think... An A was between like 93 to 100 points and it was divided up into like A minus, A and A plus and then B was about like, um, yeah, the 91 to like 80 something and then a C was around 75 to uh, 80 something. I don't know. Um, maybe I'll put a chart in here somewhere so you can see the numbers correctly but it, it's around there and then a d was like 65 and below and then my school we didn't really have f's we had e's instead of f's but um kind of meant the same thing so usually in the u.s if you have um a d which is like 65 i think you're passing but it's still not really considered good um and average scores are a c um c is average b is good a is really good um, but a C is considered average, a 75, which is not um, necessarily good. Um, so most people consider good grades to be Bs and As. Um, and in France, it's a little bit different. It took me a while to get used to the system. Um, as a language assistant during TAPIF, um, I was not responsible for any grading. But when I became a lectrice, then I had to learn how to grade But um, scores are out of 20 here in France and a 10 is considered average so half 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 the score 50% is considered average and what you what you kind of want to like at least aim for to pass um, and that's what you need to do to pass the course and then like a little bit above that is really good um, like yeah 13 14 is considered you know good and then up 16, 17, 18 is really good, and then 20, um, it's my impression here in French that 20 is very, very, very hard to achieve, and that not, not many people get a score of 20. So when it comes to testing, um, I, I don't really know too much about the testing in France because again, I wasn't part of that process. As a language assistant, I just helped out with some of the lessons and did little speaking activities with the students. But as a professor, sorry, I'm not a professor, I'm a lectrice, kind of like a lecturer in a university. Um, a lot of the time we don't have a lot of grades during the semester, but most of the time it's just the final exam that's the that determines the student's whole grade, but I do have some other classes that are contrôle continu, so I can give a few tests during the semester. Um, but um, I might make another separate video all about the differences between French and American universities, so please let me know in the comments if that's a video you would be interested in seeing, and I'd be happy to make that. However, there is one really important test, the baccalauréat, or le bac, um, as they say here in French to abbreviate, which is the really important exam that students take at the end of their year when they're terminal, which they have to do a lot of preparing for. And um, I found that 
in, in France, a lot of the testing is a lot more free response, free discussion, so a lot more writing uh, longer essays, uh, whereas in the US, sometimes we have a mix of multiple choice questions and free response questions. Also, for the back, that kind of determines what kind of path you're going to go down and determine your future studies as well. So. Um, you might choose to specify in sciences or literature, things like that. Um, I can put a little, another little graphic here to show you all the different specializations for the back. Whereas in the U.S., you don't really spec, sorry, you don't really specialize until you get to college, until you get to university. So we have SATs and ACTs in the U.S., which is not, you don't take them at your school. You have to register for it uh, separately. And these are quite, they don't, they don't necessarily have to do with your specific studies that you did in class, but they, they do test a lot of general knowledge for math, um, reading, writing. The ACT is a little bit different. The ACT has science, but the SAT, I don't remember having many science questions on it. I had to take both for different colleges that I applied to, so it really depends on the university where you want to go to if they um, request you take the SAT or the ACT. And I think some schools now are not requiring it at all, which is really interesting. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about discipline. So after working with teenagers, young adults in France and the US, I don't really think there's a huge difference between um, that age group depending on the, the nationality. Well, I mean, of course, uh, France and the US are both Western countries, so you have to take that in consideration. The cultures are not vastly different. Um, of course, there are cultural differences, but um, my, I noticed that, you know, there are some students who are really interested and motivated, some who just want to goof off, you know, it's, it's, it's not that different how teenagers behave in the U.S. versus in France. However, the structure of school in France, I feel like, is a lot more traditional. A lot of the times, um, when you enter the classroom, the, the students will stand up and you as a teacher have to tell them to actually sit down, and sometimes I forgot that a lot of the time, but I have to remind myself to tell them to sit down. Um, and then in the US, um, it depends on the teacher, I think, how strict or how traditional they are. But I do remember in my some of my teacher education classes that I took when I did my master's in the US, um, we definitely learned about creating a behavioral management system for our classroom um, and kind of you know, trying to back away from that really strict teacher knows best, you do this, you do this, okay? You kind of, in the US, I think um, students are getting a little bit more involved in the rules and, um, you know, we might not always have the, the super strict, all right, you're, you're getting a, let me, uh, in France, you can, the, the students have little like student um, books called carnet and um, has their like they have to show their ID when they enter school um, but like you can write in their carnet to um, if they like do something bad to misbehave and yeah I think in the US it really depends on the school and the teacher how strict they are. As far as studies go I think in France um, there's a lot a lot more studies going on. I think the students are in school for a little bit longer and they have a lot more classes. So um, philosophy is one thing that's required in France and Lycée, uh, but uh, it's not necessarily required in US schools. Again, in, U in the US, um, st different states are in charge of their own education system, so it can vary uh, by state. In the US, we have a lot more extracurriculars. Well, as in France, they don't really have a lot of school sports or clubs. Um, sometimes they might have like school-wide events and things, but most of the time students, um, they do do after-school activities, but it's not organized by the school. So if they're into music, they might take classes at the conservatoire, the conservatory, or they might participate in a sports class outside of school or participate in a team, a private team. 
All right, thank you so much for watching. Those are all the differences I could think of. If you have ever taught in France and or the US and you thought of another difference, please let me know in the comments. I'm excited to read about your experiences. And if you have any questions, if I, there's a subject that I forgot to mention and you're curious about it, please let me know. And please don't forget to like this video and check out my blog baguettesandbicyclettes.com for more stories and adventures in France. A la prochaine!